As 2022 winds down, Marvel Studios has been slowly filling us in on their projects that are coming next year. One that they've kept under wraps so far is The Marvels, the film that's set to follow up Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, and one character story following WandaVision. If you are interested in learning more about The Marvels, this video will provide you with all of the current information about the film. We'll begin, naturally, with the synopsis of the movie. The Marvels primarily follows up on the ending of 2019's Captain Marvel, the finer points of which were lost in the shuffle of the stuff that was going on with Thanos. Taking place in the 90s, Captain Marvel saw Carol Danvers break free of the brainwashing of the Kree and gain access to all of her powers from the Space Stone. With great power comes great responsibility, and as we saw in Avengers Infinity War, Carol has spent most of her time putting out fires across the universe since then. The synopsis for the movie talks about Danvers dealing with a universe that seems to be destabilized even further in the wake of the snap and the return of half of all life. As part of her job, she has to deal with a wormhole that's linked to a Kree revolutionary. The wormhole causes her powers to get entangled with those of her number one fan, Kamala Khan, as well as Carol's niece, Monica Rambeau. This is the MCU, so naturally, the wormhole is an existential threat to the universe that the trio has to stop. We might have seen part of these wormhole shenanigans in the post credit scene of Miss Marvel's finale, which sees Kamala Khan disappear into thin air and Carol somehow emerge from her closet. We've all seen Interstellar, so we know that holes in space can somehow give you access to bedrooms on Earth. Now, that's Carol's story. Here's what'll be going on with Kamala Khan. For Kamala, a few threads were left dangling by the end of her show. The biggest one is the bangle she and Bruno originally thought was the source of her powers. Kamala's great-grandmother retrieved the bangle from a blue wrist, meaning that it might have ties to the Kree, but we're sure that the Marvels will explore the true story of that bangle. One major sign that the bangle will be a big part of the story is that Kamala's parents are a part of the cast. The ties of the bangle to Kamala's family will certainly factor into the Marvel's exploration into what the bangle is and what it can do. It is expected that there will be further exploration into the revelation that Kamala is a mutant, setting her apart from other Marvel characters such as Carol and Monica, who gain their powers from an Infinity Stone and Wanda Maximoff's Hex, respectively. Kamala is the only character whose power powers are innate to her. As the Marvel Cinematic Universe gradually introduces mutants and the X-Men, it is hoped that Kamala's mutant identity will be explored in greater depth. Marvel Studios have been taking baby steps towards introducing mutants to the MCU, and Kamala's reveal was perhaps the first indication. As of Wakanda Forever, Namor has said the M-word, which was a big step forward for mutants in the MCU. Moving on, Monica has some complicated feelings about Carol. Carol and Monica his mother, Maria, were close friends and went on many adventures together. However, in the show WandaVision, it is revealed that Monica was snapped by Thanos, and upon returning to the hospital where Maria was staying, she learned that her mother had passed away three years prior. Unfortunately, Monica was unable to be by her mother's side due to the events of the snap, but she also discovers that Carol was not present for Maria's passing either. Maria, unfortunately, died alone. This resentment is something that Monica was seen to be carrying through WandaVision, and we doubt that her opinion of Carol would have softened much. Even though Carol had her own reasons for not being by Maria's side, she was, after all, shouldering the burden of a destabilized universe, the conflict over the situation will define their relationship for a good chunk of the movie. Monica and Carol are about the same age now, even though Monica was a child when she first met her. That will be fun to watch play out. Monica's powers will also be a part of the story in the Marvels, as we didn't see much of them during WandaVision. Spectrum is a super powerful character in the comics, even if she turns out to rank lower than the space stone powered Carol in the MCU. Additionally, while S.W.O.R.D. exists in the MCU, they don't have a super cool space base. That's gotta change in this movie, right? Now, enough about the heroes. Who will the Marvels be up against? It looks like the Kree will Kree turn as the villains once more. They are probably the most consistent non-human antagonists of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, now that Thanos is dead anyways. While the first volume of Guardians of the Galaxy had one Kree accuser as the villain, Captain Marvel's first outing pits her against the very people in charge on their home planet of Hala. By the end of the first movie, Carol had sent Jan Rog packing with a warning for the Supreme Intelligence. At the time, the Kree were also at war with the Skrulls, and Carol clearly sided with the enemy of the Kree. We wouldn't 
wouldn't expect them to forget any of that. At the same time, it's worth remembering that the events of that movie largely took place in the 90s. A lot has probably changed for the Kree since then, and of course, a certain nutsack chin character changed things across the universe. Zaw Ashton is cast as the so-called Kree revolutionary mentioned in the synopsis as having a link to the wormhole at the story's center. What does revolutionary mean for the Kree? Is there unrest in Hala itself? Or are Kree revolutionaries just people who revolve the Kree's enemies upside down? We won't find out until the movie comes out next year, but we are definitely expecting some old scores to be settled. Speaking of the scrolls, how will they factor into this? It is noteworthy that the scrolls, a race of aliens who played a significant role in the story of Captain Marvel and whose presence on Earth is partially due to Carol Danvers, have not been frequently mentioned in relation to the Marvels. This is peculiar, considering their involvement in the aforementioned story. It'd be weird for the Marvels not to address the role of the scrolls in the MCU's future, so we're thinking that the details of these shapeshifters are hiding among the details somewhere. Of course, around the time the Marvels is set to come out, Secret Invasion will take the airwaves, or whatever the equivalent of airwaves is for TV series that come out on streaming services. In fact, although we have a confirmed release date for the Marvels, July of 2023, all we know about Secret Invasion is that it's coming out in the summer. We wouldn't be surprised if Secret Invasion came out shortly before the Marvels to also set up things for the movie's story. There is more to Secret Invasion concerning the Marvels than just the scrolls. We'd be really disappointed if, after all these years, Carol and Nick didn't get to have a proper reunion that didn't involve a massive battle against Thanos. And if Marvel were to kill off Fury before he has a chance to chill with Carol, we are coming for Kevin Feige and his hat. Let's get back to the heroes and the most important thing about them, the fits. Finding cool new details about upcoming Marvel movies is a lot of fun, even if you have to dig in the strangest places. For instance, we've now gotten good looks at the outfits our heroes will be wearing in the Marvels, and you'll never guess where those details have come from. For Carol and Kamala, we have clear images of their costumes for this movie, courtesy of Mattel and their Hot Wheels. They've unveiled two of their character cars, featuring Carol Danvers and Kamala Khan. The cars are probably not significant to the movie, but the portraits of the characters certainly are. The Marvels will be kidding Brie Larson out in a suit that looks pretty similar to the one she was wearing in Miss Marvel's finale. A toned down outfit, it's basically a blue shirt with a big red accent on the collar and shoulder area. The accent is trimmed in gold and features Carol's insignia on her chest. This is paired with blue pants, on which she wears a blue belt with gold accents. The most noticeable thing about this outfit is the three-quarter sleeves, which is a tiny detail that nevertheless sets it apart from other superhero suits. Toning down Carol's costume has given it a more aerodynamic look, which suits her background as a pilot on top of being sensible gear for a superhero. Finally, for today, let's check out what Kamala and Monica will be rocking. Kamala donned a suit adapted from the comics in the final episodes of her show, but her Hot Wheels packaging suggests that things are going to be changed up from that look. The most notable change in her getup seems to be that her tunic, inspired by traditional Pakistani clothing, has been replaced by a jumpsuit. Since the movie will take her to space, the jumpsuit is definitely a more practical choice. The big eye catcher is still the lightning bolt on the front that looks vaguely like an S, though it's colored silver instead of gold. There are more red and gold accents on this costume than there were before, and Kamala is also still wearing a thin scarf on her neck that reminds us the sash that Carol wears in the comics. Currently, there is no Hot Wheels character car for Monica. However, a leaked image of a t-shirt featuring Monica has recently surfaced, giving us a glimpse of her appearance. Fans of the comics will be pleased to see that Monica's appearance inspires the black and white top with a silver logo on the chest in the comics. But that's it for today's video. How excited are you for the Marvels? Let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you're looking forward to catching this movie, then make sure you grab your tickets when the movie opens on the 28th of July.